In this video, we're going to talk about related rates. What do those words mean? What we're going to have is multiple variables that are changing over time, such as x changing over time, y changing over time. And by relating the rates, it means to find out how the rate of x is related to the rate of y. Here are the steps for a related rates problem. The first thing is to read the word problem and draw and label a diagram. Now, in the diagram, you should be labeling things that that never change and things that are changing over time. Those will be our variables. Related rates also has other data that I like to call instantaneous data. If you have a sentence that says find blah 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 at the moment when x is equal to 3, what that means is that x is equal to 3 only for one instant of time. Okay, and we're going to list out this data separately in step 2. Step 3 is to use basic geometry in order to find the relationships between the variables that are changing over time. Step number four is to take the derivative with respect to t, and step number five is to plug all of your instantaneous data into your equations and solve for the desired quantity. Here's the example we're going to work on in this video. Suppose that a hot air balloon is hovering above ground at 40 feet high. A person rides their bike toward the balloon, so the picture looks like this. As you can see, the first logical step in dealing with a word problem like this is to draw a picture, so you can see what's going on. Now, what we're going to be doing is determining how fast the distance from the biker to the balloon. Let's think about this. Remember, the distance between two points is a straight line. Between the biker and the balloon is the hypotenuse on the triangle. So as the biker travels towards the balloon, the side of the triangle will change over time. It should be decreasing. Also, as the biker moves, the distance between the balloon and the biker is also changing over time. So I'm going to label that. We're assuming that the biker is traveling at 15 feet per second. That's the velocity. Let's be a little bit careful here. If this person is traveling towards the balloon, then x as a function of t is decreasing. This side of the triangle is decreasing. And then its first derivative should be negative. So even though it's not stated in the problem that there should be a negative sign there, this is the type of thing that you have to figure out for yourself using the geometry of the problem and what you know about derivatives. And finally, notice the wording is very precise here it says the hot air balloon is hovering at 40 feet high so this 40 is never changing of course this is an idealized scenario step two is to list out instantaneous data if you look at the wording here it says how fast is the distance from the biker to the balloon changing at the moment when the biker is 30 feet from the balloon launch site it's not saying that the biker is always located 30 feet from the launch site of course not the whole setup of the problem is that the biker is traveling towards the launch site of the balloon. So when it says at the moment when the biker is 30 feet from the balloon launch site, this biker as it moves there's only going to be one instant of time when the biker is located 30 feet from the launch site. That's our instantaneous data. Step three is to use basic geometry in order to relate the variables that are in my diagram. Check out the diagram. How are x and d and 40 related to each other? Of course by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay so that's our relationship and step four is now to take the derivative with respect to t of this relationship. Now careful here, careful, careful, we are taking the derivative with respect to t, not x or d, but t. Okay, what's the derivative of 40 squared? Well that's a constant so the derivative is zero, that was easy. Okay, moving on. What is the derivative of x as a function of t squared. The x as a function of t acts like an inside function, and the squared is like an outside function using the chain rule. So the 2 comes down in front, and you get 2x, and this is the derivative of the outside function. But because we're taking the derivative with respect to t, we also have x as a function of t, which is our inside function here. So we have to multiply times x prime. Similar on the right-hand side, we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So we get 2d times d prime using the chain rule. Just a little bit of simplifying. You can cancel the 2 and 2 on either side. And this is our final relationship. Step 5 is to use our final relationship here and plug in and solve and see what we're looking for. Remember, we are trying to figure out how fast the distance from the biker to the balloon is changing. In other words, how fast the hypotenuse is changing. In other words, d prime. We're solving 
solving for d prime, okay? So all the other quantities here should have some number that we can plug in. Checking things out here, x is equal to 30 from our instantaneous data. x prime is equal to negative 15. d, we have to figure out what d is equal to. It doesn't seem to be stated here. And then we have d prime, which of course we're solving for d prime. So really we gotta figure out what this d is equal to and then we'll be done the problem. Looking at the picture, if x is equal to 30 right at this instant of time that we're trying to solve the problem, then we just use the Pythagorean theorem. Then the corresponding d right at that instant of time would be the square root of 40 squared plus 30 squared. Adding that up, we get 1600 plus 900, which is 2500. Taking the square root, we get d is equal to 50. There we go, so we plug in our d equals 50, and finally, we solve for d prime and this is our answer is nine feet per second that is how fast the distance between the biker and the balloon or the hypotenuse of the triangle that is how fast the hypotenuse is changing notice that since the hypotenuse is decreasing in length d prime does end up being negative at the end of the problem so things are making sense other problems may require different types of basic geometry formulas here's a quick list just for, for review we've got the area of a triangle the area of a circle the area of a rectangle don't forget we also have basic trigonometry types of relationships for example let's say we're talking about this balloon up here and the biker that's over here at this point on the triangle. Suppose that the biker had a camera and they were rotating up through the angle in order to get the balloon in view of the camera. Then maybe the question would ask, how fast do you have to rotate the camera over the angle? And that would be talking about theta prime. So we would want to label theta in our problem. In the previous example that was not referred to, so we just labeled things that are referred to in the problem. But in some other problem, you might have to use a relationship like tangent is equal to opposite it over adjacent or the sine relation or the cosine relation okay so that's just an example we also have similar triangles here where the height of the smaller triangle divided by the height of the big triangle should be the same ratio as the base of the small triangle divided by the base of the big triangle okay so similar triangles is another relationship in between variables that you might come across in related rates problems of course we have circumference and we have some volume formulas the volume of a sphere four-thirds pi r Cube. Don't forget the volume of a cylinder. What you do is you take the area of a circle, which is like the bottom slice here, that's pi r squared, and then you multiply times the height of h. For a cone, the volume of a cone is pi r squared h as well, except there's a one-third in front. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online, and we'll see you in class soon.